very excited because the first 991 GT3 only came with the PDK gearbox and the Point 2 was available with the old six-speed gearbox that they put into the 911R. So once again, you could choose to shift for yourself. Ultimate performance, which obviously the PDK gearbox gives you, wasn't the goal here. It was about flexibility. So since what I really found in the 911R that I liked so much better than the GT3 RS was a connection to the road. And that's what the 911R was supposed to be all about. Uh, a slightly decontented, high-performance 911 that gave you that involved driver experience, but that could also be enjoyed in the track. However, the GT3 and the GT3 RS being much more performance-oriented cars. For instance, there's a wonderful indication here on the dashboard for reference laps. So you can actually compare your lap times in the car versus uh, what you've done before. The 911R doesn't have that feature because, of course, it's not a track car. Now, I haven't set a reference lap because I think that it'd probably be a bad idea to set lap records on local public roads, but it is a very interesting thing because this is an indication of what this car is meant to do and why. Uh, so, what does it actually mean in terms of the difference between this car and the 911R? First, let's start with performance. Four liter engine, naturally aspirated, puts out 500 horsepower and 339 pound-feet of torque, which is not a heck of a lot of torque for a supercar, um, a high performance car rather. But nonetheless, it gets the job done because of the way it delivers performance. Again, compared to turbos, even twin turbos, there's nothing like a naturally aspirated engine with a good amount of torque because the power is there immediately when you want it. And one of the interesting things about this car versus the GT3 RS and 911R is the fact that this car actually revs higher than the GT3 RS. It's got a 9,000 RPM redline, which uh, is impressive indeed, and certainly something that you could exploit on a track. I'm cruising around in normal mode right now. I'm gonna switch it over to sport. and some of the fun begins. It's a very interesting thing about these cars in general. When you have a car that is suited for the track, but you can actually burble around at 2,500 RPM here in fourth gear and still have a blast with, it's quite interesting. The GT3 still feels a bit cushy compared to the 911R, um, just as I observed in the GT3 RS, which is that very strange conundrum. The fact that you've got a car which is designed for the street and track that actually has more sort of creature comforts. Um, these sports seats are wonderful with uh, great Alcantara cloth and, and leather, not too confining, holds me in nicely. The contrast stitching and the Alcantara and uh, carbon fiber in the door panels, though, seems more, I don't know, Aston Martin Luxo cruiser than, uh, than performance track day Porsche, but I suppose anybody that uh, actually ran a GT3 cup car would sort of welcome a few swatches of uh, Alcantara and contrast stitching rather than the uh, incredible drum in which they sat during those races. But nonetheless, it's an interesting environment to be in. And one of the things that I really like about these cars is the way they turn. You just turn this wheel and the car just responds immediately. That's a real pleasure. I said this before about this gearbox. It's a gearbox that really makes you want to use it. You want to shift, even sort of unnecessarily, just, just to, to feel it move in your hand 
and to hear that engine. I used to joke all the time when I'd see a 911 driving through a parking lot in second gear, and I say, you know, you could you could shift up, you know, it is possible. There's another gear there in the box, but I think I know why people just like to hear the engine doing this. It's earning its keep. It's reminding you why you buy a car like this. And maybe it isn't just about the performance numbers either. It's about a total environment. I can't say that I understand why a track day car needs automatic climate control and satellite radio. Um, but I suppose if uh, you pick a tune that really inspires you to, uh, to get a better lap time, then maybe that's, uh, that's worth it. The engine sings a tune all of its own. We could do lots of duets, this car and I. The decision's getting really hard. I pity the three bears and Goldilocks. And now me. At about 5,000 RPM, this makes quite a roar. And it's interesting that it makes this kind of sound inside the car. Outside the car, it's even more rewarding for the people that get to hear it go by. Although I remember quite vividly attending Formula One races with Porsche Super Cup as a support. And after the V10s roared by and the Porsche Super Cup cars came out, it was like following an electric car race because they were so quiet. And of course, it's just simply in comparison. Uh, a cup car in full song is uh, quite a different thing altogether. This is a car that just makes you want to go hunting apexes. That'd be a great, uh, a great subtitle. Porsche DT3, the Apex Hunter. Maybe it would be a series. Hmm. But the more I drive the car, the more difficult the decision is becoming. What do I like about the GT3? Well, clearly it's a car that feels confident and comfortable, easy to drive quickly. Easy to drive quickly, of course, is not necessarily the same as easy to drive fast, because that's another skill entirely. Um, some writers have, have, have opined about the uh, GT3 that it's a car that seems to dare you to find your best. You know, are you equal to the car? And I think that's probably what makes it such a track day favorite, is because as people explore their own capabilities, it's probably best to do it in a car that can give you the security to explore. Now, that's a very curious thing to say about a Porsche 911. Um, because, of course, the early 911s, especially the high-performance ones, like the 930 Turbo, are legendary for being extremely unforgiving. I love an engine with different characters. And this is very much one of those engines. It's typical of an engine that has great flexibility designed into it, and very typical of small displacement engines. So a four liter flat six that has these characteristics, I think is slightly unusual. Um, but you know, when you get to the, the small displacement, the 1100, 1500, two liter cars, you frequently find that between idle and say three or 4,000 RPM, they pull well enough, they, they make a nice sound, but then all of a sudden they hit their power band, they come on the cam, and at about 4,000 or 5,000 RPM become completely different animals in terms of their power delivery, the sound, and this engine does a similar thing. It's sort of a, a town and country engine, as it were, um, which is quite interesting. Here I am in the Porsche Performance Cottage. The three chairs are in front of me. The baby chair, 
the mama chair, the papa chair. Which car occupies which? I have to come to a decision because it's either this or that or this. Or is it? I'm a fan now of the GT3 as I'm driving right now, this 2018 car. It gives me a lot of what I love about the 911R. And it doesn't have a lot about what I don't like about the RS. However, I think that, <laughs> dare I say, there's still another option. This model, the GT3 in the 991.2 guys, Touring, without the big wing in the back. So I can get more of that feeling, that essential 911 visual feeling that the 911R has with this performance and this level of comfort and luxury. So, have I made a decision? Yes, and maybe not, and keep watching this space. <laughs> Whatever it is, this has been fun. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.